I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very excited about this. I know. You're about to watch history unfold, yeah. folks, in Florida this morning. So sit back, because Space Shuttle Endeavor's final launch into space is moments away. It's scheduled to take place just minutes from now at 8.56 Eastern Time. So that's four, uh, four minutes from now. It's also another dramatic chapter in the story of Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords, who is there to watch her husband lead the mission just months after her brush with death. CNN's John Zarella is live at Kennedy Space Center, where the final countdown, you can hear it. Yeah. It's underway. They're doing all these last minute checks uh, looks like this could actually happen John yeah, that's right, Allie. There's no question about it. Uh, we're under four minutes now. When Endeavour finally uh, lifts off and finishes this mission, 115 million miles it would have flown on 25 flights. 139 different astronauts will have flown on board. Uh, and, of course, I have Mike Good with me. He didn't fly on Endeavour, twice on Atlantis. That's right. Yeah, Mike flew the uh, the last Hubble servicing mission back in 09. Mike's going to be here with me in commentary. And, of course, Sanjay Gupta is, uh, is there in Atlanta. Uh, and, of course, Sanjay... Sanjay, you know, Gabby Giffords is only going to be a few hundred yards from me on top of the launch complex with the other astronauts' families watching this. Uh, I imagine it's going to be a tremendous thrill for her and incredibly lucky that she's able to be here. Right, Sanjay? Uh, no question. I mean, she's medically stable. And a lot of people, obviously, this is just a few months after this tragic injury where she was shot in the head. Uh, she, you know, this is part of, I thought it was interesting, John, part of her rehab, that she can actually leave her, her hospital in Houston, go here to Florida, all the stuff steps required for her to do that in terms of navigating steps, getting to this particular location. She's with her mother, who's also a nurse, and I guess some of the other spouses uh, of the astronauts. Uh, you know, so it's a small group of people we're hearing inside this room. But yeah, it, it, it is pretty remarkable. And I think even before the last launch, John, which as you know was, was, was scrubbed, it was, you know, sort of uh, a decision made just a few days before that whether she could go at all. So doctors weighing the, you know, the risks and benefits. But in the end, uh, as you as you know, uh, coming down on the side of her going and uh, it sounds like she's, she's doing well down there. Yeah, no question about it. I'm sure if, if it hadn't gone so well on the, the first time around that uh, uh, that they would not have allowed her to come back. Uh, I know uh, Sanjay's still very a lot of difficulty with speech yet and a lot of rehab ahead uh, ahead for her. I want to bring in Mike Good. Now, Mike, we're under two minutes, you know, less wow. than two minutes now, minute 54. Uh, and you were saying these last few minutes are compressed. They just go by, don't they? Absolutely. I'm, I'm nervous just sitting here. You were telling me, what, the, the second best seat in the house we have? That's right. I, it's great to be here with you, but there's only one place I'd rather be. Let me ask you, what, what's going through your minds now when you're in there these last, this last minute and a half or so? Oh, it's, uh, it's, you're just totally focused on, on going, and you're ready, to, uh, you're ready to get into space. You're ready to, it's only eight and a half minutes until you're going to be floating in space for the next two weeks. And, and that, when you get that... that, that adrenaline rush don't you right now I mean is the heart pumping are you like okay we're really going absolutely um, you're just uh, this is like our Super Bowl you know you're you're anxious you're trained you're ready to go you put the time in and now it's time to run out there on the field and, and play the game you know and in your case you did something like two years of training for the Hubble servicing mission so a lot right. of time goes into that we're looking at right. uh, under a minute now to go yes. uh, before the right liftoff right. Uh, and uh, you know uh, we're, we're gonna say one one quick this is an interesting crew you know you You've got Drew Foistel, who uh, learned auto mechanics at a young age. That's You've right. You've got Ch Chamatov, who is a, a magician, uh, <laughs> and, you know, has done a lot of that. And, uh, yeah. uh, of course, uh, you know, uh, the commander on board and, and, and the story he has. We're going to listen right. in now, about 30 seconds now, before the liftoff of Endeavour, the second to final flight in the Space Shuttle program's history. 25. Firing chain is armed. House suppression water system is armed. Go for main engine start. Eight, seven, six, four, three, two, zero, and liftoff for the final launch of Endeavour. Expanding our knowledge and expanding our lives in space. Endeavour, world program. Roger, roll, Endeavour. Houston is now controlling. Endeavour beginning to uh, roll over onto its uh, back. The roll program underway as uh, Endeavour begins the heads down position on course for a 51.6 degree, 136 by 36 statute mile orbit.
three engines now throttling down as Endeavour uh, passes through the area of maximum dynamic pressure on the vehicle in the lower atmosphere. Approaching one minute into the flight. Endeavour, go at throttle up. Roger, go at throttle up. Endeavour's three uh, main engines now back at uh, full throttle, all uh, three engines in good shape. Endeavour's already uh, traveling 1,300 miles per hour at an altitude of 11 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, now 12 miles. At liftoff, uh, Endeavour fully fueled, uh, weighed four and a half million pounds. It's already lost half that weight in propellant now, burned that weight. Next event is burnout and separation of the twin solid rocket boosters. Uh, that upcoming here shortly at the uh, two minute, three second point, those boosters are burning 11,000 pounds of fuel per second. standing by for separation of the solid rocket boosters. The onboard guidance system has done its job of settling out any dispersions introduced at booster separation. The uh, Orbiter's now traveling 3,200 miles per hour, downrange 50 miles, altitude 37 miles. All systems in good shape. Three good uh, hydraulic systems, auxiliary power units, and fuel cells. The fuel cells providing electrical power to all of the systems. Roger, two engine tower. Endeavour can reach uh, a TAL site in the event of a single engine failure. However, all three are in good shape. Space Shuttle Endeavour sailing into fair winds on its final historic voyage. This view looking down the external fuel tank, uh, the orbiter there on the top, as uh, Endeavour continues to power its way into orbit, traveling 4,000 miles per hour downrange, 90 miles, altitude 50 miles. Three minutes, 15 seconds into the flight. All three main engines still uh, looking in, uh, in good shape, hydraulic systems and electrical systems on board the orbiter. And good morning to you. I'm Carol Costello sitting in for Kira Phillips. Uh, we're following the final mission of the Space Shuttle Endeavour. As you know, it blasted off the launch pad at Kennedy Space Center just minutes ago. Let's listen in. An engine failure now, but all three are still in good shape, as are all of the other systems aboard the orbiter. Uh, quiet here in Mission Control as a team of flight controllers watches, watches over all of the systems. Four minutes, 20 seconds into the flight, Endeavour's traveling 5,500 miles per hour. Altitude now 63 miles, traveling downrange 186 miles, or about 335,000 feet in altitude. Environmental and control uh, systems officer here reporting a good flash evaporator system providing uh, cooling to all of the avionics equipment aboard the vehicle. Traveling into space on the forward flight deck is Commander Mark Kelly and pilot Greg Johnson. Between and behind them is flight engineer Roberto Vittori. And rounding out the flight deck crew is Mike Fink. Endeavor, press to ATO. Roger, press to ATO. Endeavour can reach orbit on two engines should one fail at this point. However, all three are still uh, performing as planned. Down on the mid-deck of Endeavour, Drew Foistel and Greg Chamatoff. Foistel headed to the International Space Station for the first time. Vittori and Fink making their first voyage on the space shuttle after uh, flying to the International Space Station aboard uh, Soyuz spacecraft previously. Endeavour, single engine, Ops 3. Roger, single engine, Ops 3. 
Uh, that call indicates that Endeavour could reach a transatlantic abort site on one engine if it lost two of the three, although all three are still in good shape. Five minutes, 50 seconds into the flight. Endeavour, press to Miko and single engine Zaragoza, 104. Roger, press to Miko, single engine Zaragoza, 104. Several calls there. Endeavour can reach a safe orbit on two engines now. The guidance system is controlling the engines to roll Endeavour to a heads-up position to optimize the air-to-ground communications through the satellite network. Flight controllers reporting to Flight Director Richard Jones are in good shape. Shutdown plan is nominal. Copy. Shutdown plan is nominal. For Mark, you're go the plus X, go the pitch. Roger, go for the plus X, go for the pitch. Endeavour, single engine press 104. Roger, single engine press 104. Endeavour can reach orbit on one engine should two fail. However, all three are still in good shape. The three main engines are uh, flowing fuel through their uh, power systems at a rate uh, equivalent to draining an average backyard swimming pool in 25 seconds. Seven minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. Altitude 64 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 630 miles. Endeavour is traveling 13,500 miles per hour. We're now seeing uh, throttling on the three main engines to maintain the uh, 3G or three times gravity load on the vehicle and the crew. A successful launch, at least so far, of the space shuttle Endeavour. Of course, Mark Kelly, the astronaut in command, his wife, Gabrielle Giffords, watching from the ground. and. A lot of touching things to tell you about this launch. CNN's John Zarella is at the Kennedy Space Center. Astronaut Michael Good is with him. And Sanjay Gupta is standing by to tell us more about Gabrielle Giffords, how she got there, where she's watching this from. And, and I'm telling and in fact, let's start with you, Sanjay, because you had um, Mark Kelly actually gave his wedding ring to his wife before takeoff. Yeah, which is, which is unusual, because I guess typically in the past, uh, he had taken hers into space. So this a little change of custom for them. But uh, in fact, uh, her chief of staff, uh, Gabrielle Giffords' chief of staff, said the ring was too big for, for her fingers. So they, they uh, actually finding a chain for her to, to wear it around her neck. But uh, yeah, I mean, it is, a, it is a touching thing. As you know, she, she did make it to Florida last time around as and well. Uh, but then the, 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 obviously the launch got scrapped. She went back to Houston and now back again, which, which is a good sign medically. You know, she's medically stable, they say. And this is part of a rehab, uh, as they Endeavor's sort of describe it as well. Her getting up these stairs, her meeting new people, new environments, the whole thing. They're also, the astronauts are also wearing yeah. wristbands, right, in her honor. That's right. They're, 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 I mean, you know, everyone, I think, has been, has been touched by this. And, you know, for, for Mark Kelly, the commander, <clears throat> uh, this was going to be his last time commanding a shuttle into space. He, he, uh, he wasn't sure if he's going to be able to do this a few months ago. He was in the middle of training, you remember, Carol, when, when this happened, when this tragic shooting occurred back in January so it was very touch and go for some time then it was touch and go whether she would even be able to attend the launch uh, even a couple days before the last time doctors were still sort of weighing the pros and cons of that but again uh, you know good good sign from a medical standpoint she's still getting rehab she still needs rehab for her speech and for the strength on the right side of her body but sounds like it's coming along yeah and those wristbands love peace Gabby, right? That right? That's Gabby, really yes. nice. Let's, let's head to uh, Florida now and check in with John Zarella and astronaut Michael Good. So, John, where is Gabrielle Giffords watching the launch from? She's actually watching it about uh, 300 or so yards from us on top of the launch control complex off to my right there. Uh, and, you know, NASA put up a curtain literally all around that area so that, uh, you know, you really can't see anything over there. Any cameramen or, or women with long lenses wouldn't be able to get a shot of her or the other families uh, of the other astronauts that are up there. You know, a couple of interesting things, Carol. Mike and I were just talking about, well, you, you just had separation from the external tank. Uh, so, Mike, literally, they're they're in space now right yeah they're on their own they've gotten rid of the solid rocket motors they've gotten rid of the external tank and it's just the orbiter now for the next uh, 16 days and that's what they'll bring back uh, to land here hopefully